I will use this diagram to explain the basic functionality of counter up block. We will assume to have a counter up in our program, somewhere in our program. The, the name is C1. The preset value of this one is 5. And the accumulator value starting with is always a 0. So there is some logic involved in our program. We do not care about the logic right now. All that we care about is when is this logic going to trigger the counter and when is it going to enable that. You remember, for the counter, each time it's enabled, the accumulator will be incremented by 1. So the basic components of my diagram are the CU bit. The CU is nothing but the counter up enabled bit, which is the representation telling us when is this counter enabled. The dump bit is the representation when is the accumulator actually equal or greater than the preset value, which is in this case 5. We have the reset, we have the preset and over here we have a step size of uh, how is the accumulator actually changing its value on the go. So let's start with this. Each time the counter up enable the increment or transitions from false to true, this is going to cause the accumulator to increment by one. Over here you can see the value over here or at the step size uh, accumulator value. So the next time we have another transition from false to true, one more time the accumulator increments to two, and you can see the value over here as well. Our third one, transitions from false to true, accumulator is equal to three right now. Uh, please note that right now in this example, we are showing kind of a periodic signal to represent the CU. Please do not be uh, confused by this. It, it does not have to be a, a periodic signal. As a matter of fact, in, in, in a couple of minutes, I'm going to illustrate the same example using RS, RS logics, and I'm going to prove to you that it doesn't matter for how long this signal stays on. It could stay on for a minute, an hour, a day, a second, a millisecond. It won't make a difference because the actual increment for the accumulator will only happen, it's going to happen only on the rising edge of this transition from false to true. So one more time. Right now it's at four. As you can see, so far the accumulator is strictly less than the preset value. So all the way from t equals zero to t equal this point over here, the dump bit is still at zero right now. The next transitions from false to true. Right now, the accumulator equals to five. And if you folks notice, it's equal to the preset value. And this is going to cause the dump bit to be set. It's going to go from false to true from zero to one. Next transition, it goes to six. Okay, this is different behavior from the timer. The accumulator can actually exceed the preset value. Another one transition right now, it goes to seven. Right now, what's happening at t equal five? Please pay attention at the moment right now. The only way, if there is no countdown block involved, if we want to hit this uh, counter and reset all of its components, the only way to do so is by resetting the counter. To do this, we need to activate the reset. And by doing this, we would be resetting the timer. So one more time, activate the reset. And you reset this. And as you can see, the accumulator goes to zero. And the dump bit right now goes to zero. So the next transition for the CU, as it goes from false to true, this is going to increment the counter back to one. So that's the basic functionality of counter up block. Right now, I'm going to illustrate exactly the same example using RS logics. Let's go there. This is the RS logics implementation to illustrate the basic functionality of a counter up block. So no programming is actually involved over here. To illustrate this, I'm going to require to create some few tags over here. So I will start by creating um, one Boolean tag to trigger the counter up. I'm going to call it go. That's going to be a Boolean. Another tag is going to be reset to reset that one. And finally, the counter. The, to create a tag for the counter, simply you need to give it a name. And where it says day type, that's where you choose counter. So it's very similar to the process of creating a timer. Simply go with counter. So here you go. We have our three tags, go, reset, and C1. Going back to our program creation area, I'll do the first run. That's where I'm going to insert my counter. So I'll call an XIC, referring to go. And 
from the tab that were test timer counter, the same, exactly the same place, I'm going to insert my counter up block. I'm going to zoom in a little bit to make things clear for you folks. As you can see to the left side, it's still showing the ease. It means there's something missing or something wrong being interpreted in this run. And as you can see to the right side, the question marks on the counter means are simply questions for the block asking you to fill them. So the counter, what's the counter name? And that's the name that we have given in uh, the program tags. So we'll go with C1. We're going to move the preset value, 5, and the accumulate value starts with 0 always. Filling all these answers, the ease disappeared. This is the first rung. I'm going to require a new rung just to establish the reset for this counter. So another XIC, referring to the reset input I have created. And to be able to reset this counter, what we need to do, we need to insert a reset instruction that exists in the same tab as timers and counters. And click on reset, which timer or counter it refers to, that's C1 in this case. So this is simply our program right now. Remember folks, it's not programming per se, it's only meant to illustrate the basic functionality of a counter. Having it completed, we can proceed with downloading it into the PLC. No errors, it's going to move on to the run mode, run mode right now. And to the left side, we can see right now our tags that we have created and we are going to use them to illustrate how this program is working. I'm going to move things a little bit over here. Okay, so we have go. Each time the go goes from fun, from false to true, zero to one. As you can see over here, this is going to be true. It's going to enable this counter, and this is going to cause the accumulated increment by one. In the previous example, we have seen uh, a periodic signal or a wave that's actually representing the go. Right now, I'm going to ignore this. So right now, as you can see. Uh, I've, I've, I'm keeping go on for like I don't know, 10 seconds or 20 seconds. This will accumulate this only by one. So it goes back to zero. Right now I'm going to do it really quick. So go goes to true for like one or two seconds. Again, this causes this to increment by one, one to two. So one more time, one, zero. As you can see, the accumulator is three right now. One, I'll keep it for one two, three, four, five seconds. Again, one more time. It doesn't matter for how long the counter is enabled. The actual increment only happens on the rising edge of the CU. So back to zero. One more time. Right now, as you can see, the accumulator hit the preset value. That's why the dumbbell is set. If we keep these pulses coming, as you can see, we keep incrementing the accumulator value. Since there is no countdown involved over here, the only way that we can actually reset or decrement this value is by applying a reset. So for the reset, we need to activate the reset button. Pressing it, the XIC is true. The reset instruction is activated and it's going to cause the accumulator to go to zero. So technically, it actually resetted everything. So the accumulator went to zero, the down bit went back to false. So that's how the counter up actually works. With a similar explanation the countdown actually works and right now we are going to see a couple examples to illustrate the count up by itself and another example that illustrates count up and countdown both in the same program so let's go